Raised from childhood as a Jedi, Skier Khan was a Force user of tremendous potential, seen by many of his teachers and colleagues as the future of their order and best hope for victory against the Sith. Specializing in battle meditation, Khan was a charming, charismatic leader, able to use the Force to enhance his powers of persuasion, gaining many loyal followers throughout his life. Unfortunately for the Order, they did not anticipate Khan's increasing radicalization as he began to blame the Jedi for the woes of the galaxy, believing it was their passive nature and non-interventionist policies which allowed the Sith to gain so much power in the galaxy. Still believing him to be their greatest hope and seeking to temper his extremist views, the High Council granted Khan the rank of Master only for him and his closest followers to abandon the Order entirely in the schism of 1010 BBY. Seeking to prove the veracity of his claims, the former Jedi and his people set off for Sith space, taking the fight directly to the enemy and one by one conquered them all. His victory was so complete, the Jedi Order sent a message of congratulations, all the while failing or refusing to see that their former friend fell to the dark side and now reigned as Dark Lord of a united Sith Order and Empire. Coming to believe the light side Jedi were the greatest enemy to peace in the galaxy, Skier Khan sought out the dark side and knowledge of the Sith to form his new philosophy. Yet while he embraced many of their ideas, he also saw a fundamental flaw in their teachings, as they focused too much on individual power, creating an endless cycle of betrayal and assassinations, as the only way for a subordinate to reach the highest level of power was to eliminate the one occupying that position. Therefore, Khan knew that anything he accomplished as Dark Lord was ultimately fated to ruin upon his inevitable assassination, once again leaving the Order in chaos and civil war. Determined to end this cycle of failure, Khan created the Brotherhood of Darkness, doing what almost no other Sith Lord in history would ever even consider by voluntarily surrendering some of his power to form a leadership council where every member was a Dark Lord of equal standing. Enacting his philosophy of rule by the strong, Khan remained in a position of leadership but now brought his ideas to the council where they voted on how to proceed. Convincing many this was the only way their order could remain united to destroy their enemies, Khan won the loyalty of many Sith warlords like Cordis and Cassim during his campaign of conquest. Though he now had an army of Sith Lords at his command, in addition to Dark Jedi like Kopej and Latour, Khan knew it was still nowhere near enough to defeat the Republic, and so grew the Brotherhood into a true galactic power by recruiting all four sensitive citizens from their worlds and training them in specialized Sith Academies, while non-Force users were brought into their military ranks to be used as foot soldiers. Seeking to end a thousand years of war, Skier Khan and the Brotherhood of Darkness invaded the Republic in 1006 BBY, winning the critical Battle of Korriban to take back their ancestral home. Under the command of Dark Lord Cordis, Korriban was home to their most prestigious Sith Academy, where only their most promising Force users were sent to become Sith Lords, the equivalent of Jedi Masters. At other schools, lesser students were trained to become acolytes and adepts, those who served the Sith Lords and were similar in rank to Jedi Knights, while any with even less potential became assassins, spies, warriors, and marauders. Growing their strength significantly, the height of their power saw the Brotherhood use an army of 20,000 Sith alongside their traditional military and fleet to bring the Republic and Jedi Order to the very edge of disaster, even threatening to invade the capital. Yet for all his victories and cunning, everything Skier Khan built was ultimately brought down by two opponents, one an enemy in the Jedi Order and the other a fellow Sith Lord who trained in the Academy on Korriban. Born to the ruling Jedi Lord dynasty of the Yushan Sector, Hoth followed the traditions of his family and joined the Jedi Order, eventually becoming Battlemaster in the Temple on Coruscant. Yet relations with the Order soon soured, as he alone saw the threat posed by former Master Skier Khan, refusing to blindly follow his colleagues into denial and appeasement. Therefore, Hoth left the Order and sought support from the Rebel Grand Council of Jedi Lords, who were far more willing to take on their Sith enemies. Forming the Army of Light, Lord Hoth was free from the restrictions of the traditional Jedi Order and so recruited as many Force users as possible to fight in their war, regardless of potential or age. Knowing they were not yet ready to face the Brotherhood head-on, Hoth began his campaign by targeting systems in the Outer Rim, far from the center of Sith power, liberating many worlds to recruit from the local population. 
Meanwhile, Dark Lord Khan and the Brotherhood continued their advance towards the galactic core, eventually conquering a relatively unimportant planet with meager defenses in the first Battle of Rusan, entirely unaware that it was here the fate of the galaxy would be decided. Though the Sith also won the Second Battle of Rusan, when the Jedi Order and Republic tried and failed to take it back, everything changed in the Third Battle of Rusan, when the Brotherhood suffered a devastating defeat at the hands of Lord Hoth and the Army of Light, which entered the war by sending all their forces to liberate Rusan. Shocked by the sudden appearance of an unexpected Jedi army, Khan rallied his Sith forces, including all Academy students, save for those on Korriban, as their best and brightest needed to finish their training. While the Sith gathered on Rusan, the rest of their traditional military and fleet continued to move towards Coruscant and the core, but progress was slowed without the aid of their Force-sensitive leaders. Despite being outnumbered and in an inferior tactical position, Khan found a weakness in the enemy lines, allowing them to win the fourth battle of Rusan and regain a significant foothold on the planet. The war then devolved into more of a prolonged stalemate, with momentum shifting back and forth. During the fifth battle of Rusan, the Sith were on the verge of victory when Valentine Farfalla descended onto the planet with Jedi reinforcements, forcing them into retreat. The Jedi were once again victorious in the Sixth Battle of Rusan, but at this point had become overextended in both men and resources, allowing the Sith to regain the advantage going into the Seventh Battle when Khan brought all their Sith students and teachers from Korriban to deal the final blow against the Army of Light. Yet after so many years of war, the Army of Darkness was only a tenth of what it was at the height of their power. Although Hoth's forces were technically only an offshoot of the Jedi Order on Coruscant, with many of their knights and masters remaining behind to defend the core, by this point the Army of Light was truly the only hope for their people, and so was supported by both Jedi and Republic. But in truth, light side forces were weakened to such a degree, Khan might still have achieved ultimate victory if not for a secret enemy growing in the shadows, the one Sith willing to stand up and expose the weakness of the Brotherhood. Born in 1026 BBY on the poor mining world of Apatros, Dessel was the force-sensitive son of an alcoholic, abusive father who called the boy the bane of his existence. After killing his father with raw force power and later a Republic ensign, Dessel fled the planet and joined the Sith army where he proved an exceptional soldier and commander. Coming to the attention of Lord Kopez, he was sent to the Sith Academy on Korriban, where he took the name Bane and became one of their most promising students. Though he struggled for a time, he attended special classes, studied ancient texts ignored by the others, formed an alliance with another top student, Githany, and defeated his greatest rival in single combat. Yet as Bane gained more knowledge and power, he started to question the leadership of Lord Khan and his departure from traditional Sith teachings, knowing that a true master of the dark side must be unrivaled and unmatched. Publicly defying Khan, he declared himself Darth Bane, embracing the title of Sith Lord's past, which was banned from the Brotherhood because it suggested superiority and encouraged rivalry. Though Darth Bane agreed infighting was a problem for the Sith Order, he believed Khan's solution was equally self-defeating. The Force was not fire to be passed from torch to torch, but venom powerful in concentrated form, yet weak when diluted. In other words, with so many Sith Lords sharing the power of the dark side, none could achieve their true potential, and so the Order as a whole would never be strong enough to defeat the Jedi and conquer the galaxy. Abandoning the Brotherhood, he left the Academy to search for ancient knowledge, and soon found the holocron of Darth Revan on Lehan, an ancient Dark Lord of enormous power and wisdom. Learning much from his new master, the rogue Sith defeated both assassination attempts sent against him, first killing his former master Kasim in single combat, and then surviving several poison kisses from Githany, who sought to prove herself to Khan by exploiting her relationship with Bane. Realizing the Brotherhood needed to be destroyed so the Order could be reformed, he returned to the Sith and feigned a conciliatory attitude, claiming he wished to use the knowledge he gained to help them win the war. Despite Khan's mistrust, Bane grew so powerful he was able to manipulate the mind of the Brotherhood leader, convincing him to accept advice and use a thought bomb against their enemies, an ancient dark side weapon able to annihilate the Army of Light. Gathering every last Sith together, who to Bane's disgust were all granted the title of Dark Lord, Khan led them into a cave system with the intent of luring the Jedi to follow them. 
Suspecting a trap, Lord Hoth gathered a hundred volunteers and led them into the cave, where Skier Khan, now well beyond the point of madness, ended a thousand years of war by unleashing the dark side weapon, killing every Sith Lord and Jedi present, while also trapping their spirits for thousands of years. Having destroyed the Brotherhood, Darth Bane remained as last of the Sith Lords, and so reformed the Order according to the personal philosophy he developed throughout his life, guided primarily by the Rule of Two, believing there must be only one master to embrace the power of the Dark Side, and a single apprentice to desire that power. Though Skier Khan's Brotherhood of Darkness only survived for 10 years, and was often seen as a perversion of the Sith Way, there were some who appreciated his philosophy of cooperative rule by the strong, with Khan's former apprentice Volta Danat, who left the Brotherhood because he believed the acquisition of knowledge was more important than the pursuit of power, incorporated some of their teachings into forming the Black Guard of Mustafar. Khan was also admired by Darth Millennial, an apprentice within the lineage of Bane, who was ultimately kicked out of the Order for his disagreements, allowing him to create the Dark Force Cult, which later became the Prophets of the Dark Side on Drum and Koss. Yet most surprising of all, Darth Bane himself showed some respect for the Dark Lord after his death, answering a question from his apprentice Darth Xana about whether the former leader was weak by realizing Khan was a fool but could not be accused of weakness. Thus ended the new Sith Wars, from Darth Ruin to Dark Lord Khan, with a new order rising from the ashes, who after a thousand years of planning, would finally unleash the revenge of the Sith. Love Star Wars Legends? Then why not check out Audible, where they have the largest collection of audiobooks available. Sign up now and get a free audiobook along with two Audible Originals, or else give the gift of membership to someone you know. If you prefer to read your stories, then click on the link to the Kindle Unlimited plan and get access to as many ebooks as you wish. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the Darth Bane trilogy, exploring the life of this infamous Sith Lord, as well as the rise and fall of the Brotherhood of Darkness. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Kyle Blitzsword, Barachado, Tio the Iron Banker, and Daedri Dragon's Wit. If you'd like to help the channel, please go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can get early access to videos, vote on future content, and access the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legends.